in this final video of this course we are going to discuss lebeg multiple integration or multiple lebeg integration the definition and the various properties of this integral are exactly the same as what we did for one dimensional lebeg integrals so we will be very very brief so we begin with the definition of a step function so let i be a n dimensional interval as i remark sometime in the earlier video i will not keep repeating n dimensional interval and sometimes just say interval leaving you to infer from context what exactly that interval is is it just an interval in r or an interval in rn so let i be an n dimensional compact interval compact interval and uh okay let it be like this let i be an n dimensional compact interval a function function s from i to r is said to be a step function step function if we can find we can find a partition partition p of i such that s restricted to ai is constant or rather s restricted to interior of ai is constant where where ai are the sub intervals sub intervals determined determined by p so a step function in rn is nothing but a function defined on a compact interval such that when you restrict that step function to each one of the sub intervals determined by this partition p rather the interior of the sub intervals determined by the partition p you get a constant value as in the one dimensional case we don't really care what the value of s is on the boundary of ai it could be anything it could be uh, completely badly behaved on the boundary of each one of these ais all we want is the function should be constant on each sub interval determined by these uh, uh, by these um, partition by this partition okay similarly we define we define a uh, general step function on rn on sorry on an interval i not necessarily compact not necessarily compact to be a function such that such that we can find we can find a sub interval sub interval j subset of i that is compact that is compact and s restricted to j is a step function as defined before and s is identically zero on i minus j so this i could now be anything it could be the whole of rn as well we say a function s is a general step function on this i if you could find a sub interval j which is compact such that when restricted to j it is a step function as defined before but outside of j it's zero okay now we define we define for a step function for a step function s the integral the integral integral of i s by definition to be just summation k equals 1 to m mu of aj times this cj where where aj is determined by the partition p determined by partition p and 
and cj is just by definition the value when you restrict s to aj note or uh, not aj interior of aj note s restricted to interior of aj is constant so uh, you just look at the constant value and multiply it by the measure of the corresponding sub interval aj in a similar way in a similar way for a general step function for a general step function define define integral of s on i to be nothing but integral of j on j s restricted to j j is a compact interval s restricted to j is still a step function so the previous definition will work so there are number of uh, simple things to check exercise check all these are well defined wherever there are choices involved and uh, i remark that we have already done all this in the one dimensional case really there is nothing uh, happening in the several variable case also it's exactly the same proofs one of the reasons of reusing the notation capital i for the interval even though something like saying that it is a cube or a uh, a hypercube or something like that saying something like that is a, a better choice of terminology but calling it intervals and calling it uh, i has the benefit that the same proofs that we did in the one dimensional case will move without any further change to the higher dimensional case as well okay so once you have defined the integrals of step functions it's a simple matter to define upper functions and lebesgue integrability so definition definition a function f from i to r is called is called an upper function on i if we can find we can find a uh, an increasing sequence increasing sequence of step functions Sn from i to r such that Sn increases to f almost everywhere on i. Here, almost everywhere has the same meaning. Uh, that means outside a set of measure zero, and we have defined what a set of measure zero is in the previous video. So, condition one: Sn increases to f almost everywhere on i. Condition two: Limit n going to infinity integral of i Sn exists. okay in this scenario we just define integral of i f to be by definition to be this limit okay so the set of upper functions is denoted by u of i uh, same notation as in the one dimensional case now we make the final definition a function f from i to r is said to be lebesgue integrable said to be lebesgue integrable if f is equal to u minus v where u comma v are upper functions on i and in this scenario we define integral of i of f to be integral i u minus integral i v okay so the theory in the several variable case is almost exactly the same as the theory in the one dimensional case word for word the same definitions we have used same notation we have used as you can expect the monotone convergence theorem dominated convergence theorem and several other results several results hold in general and the proofs are all exactly the same really nothing much to do so all you have to do is go through the proofs in the one dimensional case one again sit under a tree look at the sky and think over why those proofs generalize in a straight forward manner to the several variable case so this formally concludes this course on real analysis at a future point in time i shall present a course in vector analysis so 
Vector analysis will sort of tie up many loose ends in this course. The starting point will be the theory of manifolds, which we have already briefly dealt with in this course, Real Analysis 2. The aim is to develop integration on such manifolds. And we will do that by using Lebesgue integrals. So in this next course, we will prove something called the change of variables, which you have already used definitely when you had a course on calculus of several variables. These are the formulas relating the integral value on uh, spherical coordinates and cylindrical coordinates and all that. So there's a general theorem that tells you how to transform integrals from one coordinate system to the other. And the natural setting for to prove that theorem is on the um, on manifolds. Once we prove the change of variables theorem for multiple Lebesgue integrals, we will be able to define a, um, a measure on uh, manifolds and also define integration on manifolds. Once you define integration on manifolds, we will be able to prove some of the classical theorems that you have studied like Stokes theorem in the general context of manifolds. So that is at a future course in vector analysis where um, it will sort of directly proceed from what we have studied in real analysis too. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the video on multiple Lebesgue integration.